Hey guys, it's Cal here from Gaming Economics and today I'm going to show you what I use for video editing. Now in the beginning I used to use Windows Live Movie Maker a lot and personally I still like it as a program, it's just it doesn't suit my needs anymore. One of the things that I really liked about it though was that I could quickly render footage. It's not something that you need to have a lot of experience to use either. And what I mean by quickly, I mean literally the rendering time was much faster. Like I think it took like 40 minutes to render something that it took Sony Vegas like an hour to render or something. So Sony Vegas does have its drawbacks. It's a beast of a program, but it's not quite there yet. Uh, some of the main drawbacks from using Windows Live Movie Maker is if you're using DX Story, uh, you lose a big part of the advantage like you'll notice that here it's just the one audio track like you don't even see the audio track it's just embedded in the file you can't separate them as far as I know um, you can add a second um, thing for your audio like you can add in music but if you wanna render your voice separately from your uh, footage that would take a lot of extra work, and I don't think anybody's really willing to put in the extra effort. Um, that being said, uh, another drawback for Windows Live Movie Maker is if you're recording with a weird resolution, something other than 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080, you're going to get these black bars no matter what you do. Like you can try using this. And, um, I've still gotten black bars. I mean, you don't see the black bars here. Whoopsies. Ah, stop playing. Whoops. I'm sorry about that. Um, you don't get the black bars here, but from my experience, you still get the black bars. I'm not sure how to get rid of them. You still get the black bars. It's just something screwy. But with Sony Vegas, all you have to do, maintain aspect ratio no black bars are gone so now I've shown you which ones I prefer for what reasons um, Sony Vegas will just do a lot more for you um, but it'll take a little bit more time so if you've got a good video card and CPU you'll be good you'll have no problem it'll be a no-brainer if you've got the money to buy Sony Vegas. I, I might as well mention that Sony Vegas does cost a lot of money, but Windows Live and Movie Maker is completely free. It's what I used to run, and if you're using Fraps, you've adjusted all of your audio levels perfectly fine, and uh, you're using a resolution that's not funky. Um, like, personally, I use 1600 but 1200, and that's why I get these black bars, because I run at a 4.3 resolution. Not aspect ratio there we go um because 1600 by 1200 is just not quite so compatible with 169 um so if you're using fraps you've got all your audio stuff set up perfectly and you're you've got a good resolution you can use windows live movie maker perfectly fine it, it won't give you some of these extra effects um but if you wanted to do something like add in um not shading. Um, what's it called? Blah blah blah. My mind's freaking out right now. Um, fade in. Um, here, I'm gonna mute that real quick just so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, if you want to add in a fade in, all you have to do is split the video. You go to visual effects. Blah blah. Apply your fade in. That's not fade in. What am I doing? There we go. And then um fade out. Um, so you get this nice little fade in effect and then skip over here and then uh, wait a few seconds and you, you'll you start seeing the fade out effect. Um, one thing, you can't control the fade in, fade out. Obviously you get the nice audio fade in stuff right here. Um, so that's all good. Now you know how to use Windows Live Move Maker really. Um, some bitrate settings really quickly. Just go to this little tab right here save movie press that button it's like the thing right there just all the way to the bottom create custom setting and I'll show you what you need to know um... bit rate of thousand it's, it's basic what you need um... if you could I would go higher than that um... 
and I've heard by an audio professional, or I don't know, somebody who's good with audio, like, not a professional, but somebody who does a lot of work with audio, that you don't really need anything above 44.1, so if you want to do 44.1, fine, it really doesn't matter, audio, okay, let's see, um, I'm gonna put the audio at, like, the worst part, oh, wait, what, what the heck, no, that's the best, that must, yeah, that's the best, and then if I put a lowest, there's a 3 megabyte per minute difference, so, you can put out the highest, it doesn't really matter, it's not going to make any difference, it's just I'm saying, apparently, you don't need anything higher than like 44.1, I'm not sure what, what KBPS that is, but I don't know, just go crazy, it's not going to make any difference. Um, for a lot of my videos, literally, all I do is I boost this up by 2,000, I go with 10,000, that's my go-to uh, bitrate. It it doesn't make a lot of a difference, but if you go down to like, just go crazy, go to 500, look at what that is. You'll see what the bitrate does. Just If you don't know what it does, experiment. That's how I learned a lot of my stuff. Okay, you'll notice one thing. It does significantly increase the um, megabyte thing, and it'll also increase the amount of time it'll take to render. Like, if I do that, it'll go up a lot more. I just added an extra bitrate thing, so it's now 100,000. You don't need that big, unless you're doing something extremely professional. Like, if you're Freddy W, you're gonna go with, like, a 200,000 bitrate, but chances are, you're watching this because you're doing, um, first-person shooter stuff. Um, it's been my experience that if you do 1280 by 720, you're golden. Like, you don't need to do 1080p. It's more of like that thing, like, oh my gosh, I'm running 1080p. Oh my gosh. You don't really need it. I'm not going to say this because I'm not going to actually render it out. So, yeah. You don't really need 1080p. Um, so, now I'm going to show you just some quick things that you should know. Um, I'm going to, uh, for Sony Vegas, so watch my mouse cursor because I. Yeah, this will all be easy. I don't have any real presets. It's not like, oh my gosh, I'm going to watch this tutor tutorial and I don't know how to do anything that it says. You'll actually be able to learn from what I do. Okay, so fade offset. Just grab this little triangle right here. Boom, adjust your fade. Um, that goes really... It's an offset. You can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and position it. You'll eventually see these bars up at the top, it'll like start say two seconds. So if you want your fade to last two seconds, drag it to this bar right there, boom, two, ten, uh, two seconds. There we go. Also, same goes for this, same goes for the audio. And here's the one thing that makes DX Story stand out from the rest. Um, this is obviously not DX Story, this is just Sony Vegas. So uh, DX Story is a different recording software, um, but but the big drawback for that is you can't record your desktop with DX Story. Um, but what DX Story does is uh, this right here as you can see by my mouse cursor this is my vocal audio this isn't the game audio so I can literally use Sony Vegas to tone down the game audio right here um, they'll just have to like grab this button here drag down and drag the other one up to find out which one is your game audio because I don't think it changes it's usually the game audio is on top and the vocal audio is on the bottom um, so yeah, just make that distinction when, distinction when you're um, changing the audio. Uh, I don't think this resets, just adjust it back to right around where it was if you're going to mess with that and want to put it back. There we go, zero. Um, so you can boost your vocal audio. You, you can tell that this thing's dead like right now because there's no audio jumps like there is here. But that's just because I had my microphone off when I was recording it, so ignore that. Um, so you can... Um, take down the game audio and boost your um, vocal audio. So when you first start recording, you don't have to turn down your audio like you do with raps. You can go full immersion. Just make sure that it's not going to make it so you don't talk when you're doing it. Because, oh my gosh, it's so boring when you don't talk sometimes. Unless it's like a really cinematic thing where you don't need to talk. But that's just your play style and that's not what I'm going to teach you. So just a few basics right here. Um, I already showed you some color characters just bring that in from other stuff. I'm going to make this full screen real quick. So there are a bunch of um, extra effects you can use. Like right here, video effects, if you see my cursor, they you should. If you don't, then just rewind. 
Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do, like right here, around here, there's actually something that said chroma key, so you can do a lot of stuff, yeah, there we go. Um, this is for green screen, I've actually experimented with this, I used a book cover, and I put it in front of my webcam, and I actually, it produced a green screen effect, surely enough, but, I mean, it was crappy, because book cover's not a green screen <laughs> by any means. So you can do a bunch of random crazy stuff, that looks like crap, but you can tell what it did, so you can do whatever you want, you can make a bunch of effects, this is um, useful if you're doing stuff like troll videos, like I know a lot of people like Apple Teeny, if you don't know who he is, I'll link him in the description, he uses Sony Vegas, like if you're just doing random stuff, you don't need something like Adobe After Effects, if you're going to be doing like Oh my gosh, elite no scope footage, then you should be using After Effects, which I really don't know much about currently, so I can't help you out a lot with After Effects. Um, so, if you're going to be using this, I'm going to show you how to improve your rendering settings. Um, just like I did. Okay, so let's go back so I can show you that. Project, make movie, next. Um, this stuff's interesting. Like, Okay, um, I'm going to show you something real quick. Uh, just putting back the black bars just for demonstration purposes. Okay, blah, blah, blah. You already saw me go to there, so I don't need to tell you again. Now, as far as I know, um, you can get rid of these black bars again by pressing this button. Now, I don't want to rely on that personally, so I don't usually do that, I usually just remove the black bars, and this is only, again, if you're using a weird resolution like I am. If you're going to be using 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080, you don't need to worry about this at all, it's perfectly fine. Honestly, I don't know what this does. Like, I always set it to cable just because it's like, oh, I'm just, I don't want to worry about it, so I just increase the quality. Um, I don't know what this does either, but, you know, I always uncheck it just because I want to. Um, I just click the advanced render button, if you didn't see it, then just go back a few seconds. Um, now what this, what I'm doing right here is I'm going to adjust my bitrate and everything. Now this is just standard stuff, audio, change it to what you want, it really doesn't affect the file size that much. Video, this is just the resolution, again frame rate, apparently 29.97 is what Hollywood uses, so I just have it set to that just because. Um, 30 frames is really what YouTube limits the frame rate to, if you don't already know that, so don't go with 60! And if you're going to be using um, the X tree, which I'll do a tutorial for that later, um, then make sure you have the um, frame rate limit set to 30. And I'm not sure how to correctly do that for Fraps yet, so I don't know. Like, it always has the video and um, your game frame rate set to 30, which I don't like, so that's another reason why I like using the X tree now. Um, so, yeah. 30 frames per second. 1280 by 720, same, good. It doesn't really matter. Um, bit rate, for this I decided, uh, you know what, what the heck, I'm gonna go 16 because I don't really care. I can afford the extra time to render out a video. Really, bit rate, the higher you go, it's more of like diminishing returns. Like, once you get up to like 20,000 really, I think it's not gonna start to make much of a difference. Personally, it's just like if you're professionally into this, then you're going to have a crazy high bit rate. Um, Fraps actually records at a crazy high bit rate. I'm not sure what it is. Um, I have a video right here. Yeah, look at that number. Um, well, I'm not good at math so much. I think that's 1,843,905. Yeah, that is crazy high. That is why this 22nd video is 318 megabytes, which is... Um, a lot higher, many more times higher than, almost six times higher than what what I had for Windows Live Movie Maker for a video three times that long. It was 20 seconds, uh, 318 megabytes versus one minute for 60 megabytes. A big difference! Um, so yeah, 16 megabytes will get you far. I think that's personally the highest you need to go. I'm not sure if anybody really goes higher than 16 um, and for a bit rate. That is equivalent to six, um, 16,000 for um, Windows Live Movie Maker, just in case you wanted to know. Um, 
so yeah, that's that's that for Sony Vegas. I don't think I've left anything unanswered. Obviously, you can um, drag the opacity down uh, right here. There's an invisible bar right here, in case you didn't know. I actually, I don't know if it took me that long or if I just like magically found everything out. Um, what this does is it really just it drags it down. So if you have another layer behind this, so um, if you had something drag that up there. If you had something right here, it would show it on top of like show it vaguely behind it. So if you like drag this all the way down, it would have the image right behind it perfectly. You wouldn't see anything behind it. Um, so you could keyframe it to become more um, opaque. I think maybe I'm not quite sure how that works. Maybe you could, maybe you put maybe you couldn't. I I actually don't really know because I haven't done that before actually. Um, so you've got all your stuff that you need to know. I've taught you everything. Um, there's also an invisible bar here. I'm not quite sure what it does. Um, it basically just like quick eliminates some of the peaks because you can see it's destroying some of the peaks. But that also makes it quieter. So there is a little bit of a trade-off. So this has gone a little bit long. I've taught you pretty much everything that you need to know. Um, which programs, the trade-offs of each, benefits, just everything you really, really need to know. Um, my biggest thing that I really like about Sony Vegas over um, Windows Live Movie Maker, Move, Windows Live Movie Maker. In fact, the two things that personally really set the bar that really separate it is um, the fact that you can. Um, oh, oh my gosh! I just blanked out. Um, have these two audio switches and remove the black bars. There we go. Another thing, really quickly in passing, um, that you really should know about these programs, um, specific, well, this program, Sony Vegas, um, something that really annoys a lot of people, um, especially me sometimes. Uh, okay, right click on your video, go to switches. You see this resample thing? If you want to know what that does, just look it up on YouTube. Basically, it makes a double of the image to try to make it smoother, but basically what it does, it adds some kind of ghosting. It's not that good, really. It just it sucks. So go to Disable Resample, and it'll make it look much sharper. Um, if you're running with low frame rate, I think you might want to have it set to Smart Resample. But if you're running a high frame rate, don't even bother with it. Just disable it. It's not going to make it look any better whatsoever. So, yeah, this has been Kyle from Gaming Economics. Bye! I hope I can help you with any more future questions. Have a good day. Bye!